Okay, Chip Irwin here at Oshkosh 2024, and we're in the Aero Marine booth, and it goes all the way down past that tree. Other videos will cover what we're showing, but we can talk about the hybrid now, which is this airplane, and I've got my camera operator, which is much better for me, that would be Davey, and I'm handing it over to him, and go ahead, and we're gonna come over here, and uh, well, we'll get back to our colleagues here that we're doing that hybrid whip for the turbine but if you take a quick look here we're starting this project with the harbor freight predator which you can get at harbor freight for 950 dollars and a free flashlight and 50 dollars off on father's day and we've already set this up well, this is a running working fully functional predator it's um, starts at 22 horsepower, but it's easy to take the governor off and get 30 horsepower. In this case, we have the reduction drive, but the upper motor is electric. This one happens to be a hacker motor from Germany. It's a little bit undersized at 12 kilowatts. But again, this is for bed testing. And then underneath, we have the slipper clutch. So the concept here is that the aircraft can have double power for takeoff, and then at cruise, It'll be able to run on a lower horsepower engine, which is more econ economical, so we have range extension. Plus, with a, it has, basically has twin engine redundancy, uh, that uh, if the engine quits, you don't have to worry about this impossible 180 degree turn, you can complete the pattern on electric. Well, you don't really need about 10 pounds of battery. We're only going to put a like one, one or two kilowatt hour battery in this because you're only using this for. Uh, Take off assist. <coughs> well, the slipper clutch was here, and it's over here now. <coughs> this is what the bottom pulley on the PTO of the engine. You see, it easily turns one direction, but doesn't turn at all the other direction. Which means you can spin the electric motor and not have to turn over the, the, the gas engine. It'll spin freely and allow the electric motor to operate. Or if you put in power to both, then you get power from both power units. Uh, now, if you look at how we're doing this, we're taking a, a electric motor. You see a couple different sizes here, and we mill out these rings. There's more. There's a lot more hardware that's not here, but we mill out these rings and put them on, and just make more of them and more belts if we need to scale this up. Because we will be scaling it up. We may be flying with the Predator. But that's not really our objective. That just was the easy, quick place to start. This is our classic V-twin, 60 horsepower, four-stroke engine that we supply for the Merlin and for other aircraft. And that that motor on the table is about the right size, that being 30 to 40 kilowatt size, which would be form the upper pulley of the reduction drive. So those components are in production in development now at the millers and fabricators and first we have this is our first hybrid this merlin it's not a hybrid now it's a v-twin with our classic reduction drive and we'll flight test it and benchmark it first as it's normally sold and then we will replace this reduction drive here with the electric motor reduction drive and the and the, and the pulley down here with the slipper clutch in it and then we'll fly this. But there's two more interesting features of this aircraft I'd like to point out. One is what some people call bomb bay doors. And that could be used for that purpose. But in this purpose, it's so you could easily put uh, in the battery pods and remove them. Or even eject them if they were to become a fire hazard. So we, and those are functional. In fact, uh, I might want to actually show that. Okay, 
get back to the camera. On this aircraft, it has seven servos. I could name them all, but run like uh, elevator and ailerons. It's a classic two-axis autopilot. But we go beyond that in putting a servo on the rudder pedals, and that's necessary because of uh, the third axis, but more so for the, the steering of the nose wheel for remote operations on the ground. The fourth servo would be for the Bombay doors, and uh, another one for the throttle, and another one for the brakes, and then even another one to activate the um, the GRS parachute system, should it be necessary, it can be remotely actuated. So this airplane is set, being set up for uh, not only hybrid and long range, but for fully autonomous flying. And one of the ways we can do that is up here is the first Starlink Mini. Already installed, 3D printed mount, and fully activated. We're on. In fact, the, the phone that Davey's using for the, filming this is on the Starlink Mini Wi-Fi. So this aircraft, fully, fully Starlink enabled, is a true mobile hotspot. So you can be get full high bandwidth um, internet, which you can use to control the aircraft or watch Netflix. So manned or man, unmanned. That's what we're doing with this, uh, the first hybrid uh, airline. But scaling, now we're gonna get onto the really cool stuff, which if that's not cool enough, is to scale this up from, first from the Predator into the V-Twin into a turbine. And this will be the first turbine, parallel hybrid turbine. And that's really exciting for a whole variety of things. So I'm gonna hand over the interview to Brian, who's a built this engine. Hello. And I'll take it away and show us how we make, what's great about this turbine, which is another story itself, and what's even greater about it if it was a parallel hybrid. Okay, well I'm Brian Seegers, I'm representing Redline Turbines. This is a 100 horsepower, recuperated, twin spool gas turbine engine. Very similar to the PT-6 in layout. But and recuperated heat, because nobody knows what that is. It, what is recuperation? Me. And why? And why? So we're going down a little rabbit hole there, but it's kind of important to why this is a, a that why we chose this turbine. The distinguishing the distinguishing feature of this engine is an exhaust heat recuperator. And that's this section right here. And what the recuperator does is takes the air after you've compressed it after you've compressed it, and adds heat by blowing the exhaust past tubes that are inside the stacks here, you can see. Any heat that we add to the air after we've compressed it is that much less fuel we have to add in the burner. And so we can have perhaps 15% lower fuel burn because we carry this recuperator. Now this engine is rated at 100 shaft horsepower and it is a prime candidate for hybridization, parallel hybrid system, uh, similar to the reciprocating engines you see back here. And we could mount roughly a 100 horsepower electric motor generator here, raising the thrust line and slowing the propeller down to uh, perhaps 2300, 2600 RPM. And the, um, similar to the piston engines there, We'll have an overrunning clutch here, a sprag clutch bolted directly to the propeller shaft. We'll run a V-belt drive or a cog belt drive up to the reducer, through the reducer, and basically be able to switch on and off an additional 100 horsepower. So like these other systems, an extra 100 horsepower for takeoff. When you turn it off in cruise, you're cruising the engine now, a smaller gas turbine. This thing at uh, 10,000 feet would 70% uh, power is burning maybe seven gallons an hour. So Ooh, there's a lot of copper in this sucker, but that's where they get a, That's where you can get better propeller efficiency and get it right in the sweet spot of the propeller RPM, regardless of the fact that you're adding a second power system, which makes it a twin engine reliability. So sorry to jump in there. I'm not going to hold this forever. <laughs> um, you have a smaller gas turbine, so you're going to be burning a lot less fuel when you're in cruise. 
Um, you know, if I had a 200 horsepower gas turbine and I had to throttle back to 50% uh, power thereabouts, I would be burning a whole lot more fuel than I would with this engine equipped with this recuperator. Say, uh, this engine is a new centerline design. There are no APU parts in this engine. There are no parts that have been uh, purchased from junkyards, anything like that. This is a new centerline design. Well, and raising the propeller up uh, will allow us to uh, have greater ground clearance so we can add more blades and more propeller to soak up all that energy we're putting into it. To quietly soak up that energy. Yes. Without screaming it, without screaming at the propeller. I mean, and you see that electric aircraft, well, let's make it quiet, okay? And then they spin it at 10,000 RPM with the blades going supersonic. Or let's make it quiet with range extension, and then they throw in a, um, a some type of gas burning engine to charge the batteries, which adds noise and, and defeats the purpose of being green. So, we're just make, doing things that make a little bit more common sense when it comes to aviation. What, do you have anything else to add on, 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 on that? Not really. Okay. We're uh, very happy to be part of this uh, part of this family. Well, you've seen it here. First at Oshkosh. Another first. Aeromarine signing off. Oshkosh 2024.